Hey guys, Teresa here. Welcome back to my channel, Lost My Thread. Today I'm going to be ranking every free sewing pattern I've ever made. I am a sucker for a free sewing pattern, and I will say I've mostly had pretty good success out of the sewing patterns that I've used, but I have had the occasional flop that were just not even worth the price of printing out the PDF. I thought it'd be fun to rank all the free sewing patterns that I've made over the years, 15 in total. I think it's gonna be tough to put them against each other, so I'm gonna use a tier system. I'm gonna have to be brutal to actually split these up. I will talk you through my tier system now. The bottom tier I am calling do not download this pattern. Anything in this category, I basically am saying just steer clear. Forget I mentioned it as soon as I talk about it. The only reason I'm telling you is to be thorough, but these are not patterns you wanna mess with. Then I've got Don't Say I Didn't Warn You. Now, these are patterns that they're not terrible, but they're really not great. They have some major flaws and I would approach with caution. I see why it's free are for patterns that are basically decent garments. They're absolutely fine. If I had paid for them, I probably wouldn't be the most thrilled, but because they were free, they're okay. I'd Sew It Again are for patterns that I've made, that I enjoyed, that I see myself making again in the future. They're not necessarily the greatest patterns in the world, but they're good ones. They're solid patterns. Well Worth Your Sewing Time is for patterns that I would say are really great patterns. I enjoy the process, I enjoy the finished garment, and I definitely recommend these ones. Wardrobe staple are for ones that I will definitely be making for years to come. I know that these garments, every time I make them, I'm gonna love them, I'm gonna wear them. They are some of my top worn makes every season as I look throughout my wardrobe, and I think these are really great ones to add into anybody's wardrobe. Download this pattern is the next level, extra special. There's something exceptional about this pattern that I particularly love it. It really suits me, it really suits my wardrobe, and I feel like if it's a style or something that you would like, Genuinely cannot recommend these patterns enough. These are in no particular order. First up is the Super Basic Tank Top by Half Moon Atelier. I have made multiple versions of this. I have a lot of reasons why I love this pattern. I will say the shape in general I really like. I like the scoop of the neckline. The armholes are really comfortable depth. The thickness of the strap is perfect for covering bra straps. It has a really beautiful finish around the neckline and around the armholes. I feel like it looks just really clean, really slick. I have made three versions just of the straight up pattern of this, but I will say for me, the fit is not perfect across the bust. There's not multiple bust cup sizes, so I actually did a bit of a mashup with a Concord tee by Cashmeret, so I could just change the shape of the bust area and I made two more versions like that, but I basically used this pattern. In general, I think it's a really good basic pattern if it's a good shape for you and if you fit into the size range. I think the biggest downfall for this one really is the size range, so it only goes from a 34 to 48 inch hip, so if you don't fit in that size range, it's not going to be an option for you. I'm going to have to put it into I'd Sew It Again just because I definitely will sew it again. It's not a bad pattern, but I would be having to make some adaptations, so it's not perfect as it is, and it is pretty limited with who's gonna be able to make it. Next up is the Peppermint Wrap Top, designed by In The Folds for Peppermint Magazine. I love this pattern. I really, truly do. I will say this in general for me is a really good shape. I think it's probably gonna vary a little bit for different people. I love how cropped it is. It makes it so good to wear with any kind of high-waisted skirts, high-waisted trousers. It goes with so much in my wardrobe. I feel like the style of it is really adaptable. It can look more dressed up. It can look more cool and casual. You can make it with a whole variety of different types of fabrics. I've seen it in more heavier weight fabrics, lightweight fabrics. I feel like everything I've seen it in looks absolutely beautiful. I have made it in a linen fabric. I've also made it in a cotton double gauze fabric. Absolutely love both versions. The thing I particularly love about this pattern is where the crossover goes. For me, I have a fuller bust and I often have difficulty with wrap things, exposing too much cleavage. This one, it just sits at just the right place where I'm never revealing too much. It feels really secure. I will say in general, it comes together really nicely. It's made with French seams, including that armhole. I will say in general, it's a satisfying construction. It's a more involved construction, I will say. So bear that in mind. With the French seams, it all takes a little bit longer. But for me, this one is definitely a really good wardrobe staple. So I'm gonna have to just stick it up in that category. Next up is the Basic Instinct Tee by Segundo Second Piano. 
I have slightly conflicting feelings about this one. I mean, I will say this one is definitely a really great pattern for me. When I found it, I felt like I had found my t-shirt pattern. And I think for this style of t-shirt, it really probably is my go-to. It's a really good crew neckline. I like the length of the sleeve as well. I feel like it's just a good overall length and shape. I like in general how it fits, the looseness of it. I think everyone has their own individual preference for how loose they have a t-shirt. And obviously different patterns are gonna be different for different body shapes. But this one for me is a really good basic t-shirt. I've made three versions. They all fit me really well. I definitely think I will be make this, making this pattern again. The main issue with this one, again, it's the size range. It's a very limited size range. I'll pop up on the screen, but basically it was a pattern that someone who doesn't design patterns made. They didn't make a huge size range out of it. If you fit into it and you like the style of t-shirt, I think it is a really good pattern. And for me, for my body type, I really do like it. So I think I am going to put it I don't want to put it in I'd sew it again. I do want to put it in I'd sew it again, but honestly for me, I really like this one. I don't even have to make any adjustments, which is really unusual for me. So I'm saying it's well worth your sewing time. Next up is the Peppermint Pocket Skirt by Paper Theory, designed for Peppermint Magazine. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you might have some idea that I have a lot of positive feelings toward this skirt. I love this skirt so, so much. It goes with so many different styles of tops in my wardrobe. It is comfortable, it is flattering. It's a beautiful skirt overall. The construction is super satisfying the way the pockets come together. There are ginormous pockets on this skirt. I mean, who doesn't love a good pocket? I will say I did slightly just change the height of where the pocket hits, just because for me, I have quite a long torso and I wanted to wear this at my natural waist and I didn't want the pocket to be too high and add a bit of bulk. So I lowered the pocket opening by an inch. That worked really well for me. But I feel like in general, if you can get a good fit on this skirt, in my opinion, I feel like I can go so far with this skirt. I plan to make many more versions. I've just made one, but I have various fabrics that I plan to make multiple versions of. This skirt, I genuinely cannot stop telling people about how much I love it. I will be wearing this one until it is in absolute tatters. This is a download this pattern, guys. Next up is the Mandy Boat Tee from Tasudi Fabrics. This one, I will say, is a really good solid pattern. I see why it's a popular one in the sewing community. It's a really nice drop sleeve boxy tee. What I will say is it is absolutely boxy. That's definitely a really good word to describe it. It is quite big in the body. And my versions, even though I went with a boxy shape, expecting it to be a bit oversized, I was swimming in it. I had so much fabric. I ended up taking in, I think, like a good six inches in total out of the side seams of each of my versions. And they're still quite boxy as they are. I will say this one though is such a super quick pattern. It comes together really quickly. I generally feel like it's a nice, easy, quick win if you're looking for a project and you've got some jersey to use up. Personally, I would always size down at the waist, but other than that, there's really not too much that I would say against it. It's not the best finish in the world, but it's a nice, quick and easy project. I think I'd probably go with I'd Sew It Again. Next up are the City Gym Shorts by Pearl Soho. This I have made two versions of. I've actually made two pairs of shorts. One of them is no longer in my wardrobe. I made them at the same time and I wish I'd actually made one just to see how I thought the fit was before I made the second pair. These ones I will say run small. If you have any kind of heavier weight fabric that's not a super lightweight cotton lawn fabric like the one version that I still have in my wardrobe, I recommend sizing up for this pattern at least one size. But unfortunately, the size range on this one is abysmal. It only goes up to a 48 inch hip is the maximum, which I'm like barely into. I have a 42 inch hip. So if I sized up, I'd almost be at the top of the range, with, which I think is honestly pretty poor going. I will say in general though, the shorts that I have, I do really love. The shape and the style are fantastic. I love the piping going down the side seam. Very 80s, very retro, very fun to wear. And actually the cotton lawn version that I made are probably my most worn pair of shorts to wear when it's hot out. They're my favorite thing to wear when it's hot. So though I like the version that I made, I also made a linen version that was too thick and it was too tight couldn't wear them, had to throw them away. I did also add pockets because this one doesn't actually come with pockets. So this pattern, honestly, I don't have a lot of love for it anymore. Even though I like the pair of shorts that I have, I adapted them and they're not even that great as they are. I'm gonna have to say, don't say I didn't warn you for this one. 
Now I'm just going to throw in there, I'm not going to do this a whole lot, but there's a pattern from Friday Pattern Company, I think they're called the Sport Shorts, that are really similar, that have a much bigger size range, that look like a much better pattern, they've got pockets, so that one I'm definitely going to be trying out, I think that's going to replace this one, but this one, approach with caution, is probably my best thing to say. And then the Cass Wide Leg Pants from FabricStore.com. These are just a really super basic wide leg loose fitting elastic waist trousers. They're pretty decent for what they are. They don't have any inseam pockets. They're really simple construction. But this is another one that honestly, I think you should size up one size just to get a really comfortable fit around the hips. The ones that I've made are just not as comfortable as I would like. I did make a pair of shorts out of these and they're absolutely fine, but I would have preferred a little bit more space in the hip when I'm sitting, when I'm squatting, when I'm bending, moving around. I also use this to make a jumpsuit that I'm going to talk about later, which ended up a bit too tight as well. So I think if you size up, it's fine. It's definitely a really basic pattern. So, you know, if you're looking for a basic, it's okay but I suspect there's probably a better one out there, to be completely honest, that may have some inseam pockets and maybe it's just a better fit right out of the box. So I think this one I'm probably gonna have to put into, I see why it's free. Next is the Peppermint Valley Jumpsuit designed by Ready to Sew for Peppermint Magazine. This one, if you like the style, I think is a really good jumpsuit pattern. There's not really a whole lot to say against it, but the finish is lacking, is what I would say. So I feel like the way it finishes around the neckline it's fine, it's okay. The way the front of the facing is folded back and then stitched down, it's okay. I would have probably preferred a little bit of a neater finish there on the inside of the facing and around the neckline. I will say my version as well, I did actually change the neckline. I didn't like how high it was sitting, so I lowered it quite significantly. And I do prefer the neckline that I made on my version. This is definitely a really interesting sew. The pattern pieces are really bizarre. The top is just one piece that goes from the front to the back, and then you have two of those, you cut two, and the same with the trousers. So there are barely any pattern pieces Pieces in this one but they are really bizarre pattern pieces if you're interested in interesting construction and you like the look of this jumpsuit I think it's a fun one to play with but I don't think it's one that I'm personally going to go back to again and again as far as the fit in general I did size down one size and is slightly short in the torso so from the top of my shoulder down to the crotch it's a little bit tight which is not typical for me for jumpsuits Maybe it's because I sized down, but I would have preferred a little bit more length there as well. So between the fit of it not being the best for me, having to make those adjustments and not loving the finish, I feel like I have to stick this one in. I see why it's free. Now the zero waist pattern from Schnitchen Patterns is not my friend. This is not a good pattern, guys. I do not recommend this pattern. When I made this one, calling itself a zero waist pattern, I was floored by the number of pattern pieces that were required to cut this out of a long, big rectangle of fabric. Being a zero waist pattern, you have a big rectangle, long strip of fabric, you cut out a hole that becomes the neck hole, and then you take that and create a patch pocket, and then you just sew some seams down the side to create the dress. There was also a channel that went in there, so there was a little strip of the fabric at the top that became the channel. But honestly, guys, this was the most simple design. I really could have, should have just figured out how to draw those lines and sketch it out myself. I wasted so much time and effort putting all those pattern pieces together. As far as the size, it's basically like a one size fits all, which is not gonna work for lots of people, obviously. Depending on the drape of the fabric, if it's just bigger than you, you can probably get away with it. But it's essentially gonna depend on if you take the width of your fabric and hold that against your body and put some seams in, are you gonna have enough extra to kind of flap out on the sides? If it's a wider fabric, you might get away with it. If you're larger, you might not get away with it no matter what. It's not a great pattern. I do not recommend this pattern. I should say, I freaking love the dress that I made. It has a totally messed up neckline because there's no bias around that neckline to keep it in place. You have just like a straight strip of fabric that goes around which doesn't work. So that is the downfall of the zero waist. But the pattern or the, the fabric that I used, I think was super fun. And the outcome that I have is an incredibly fun dress, but it is pretty doggone short. I could have done with a longer piece of fabric. I went with what they said, which was also the fabric, fabric that I happened to have. But it's a short dress. It's super cute and fun. It is not practical. Having those sleeves slapping around is ridiculous. I don't wear this one a lot, but I do really enjoy when I wear it. 
But for real guys, I wish I hadn't paid or I wish I hadn't paid for the paper and the ink and spent my hours making it. I would say if you want to make it, you can make it, but I can't recommend it. Do not download this pattern. Next up is the Peppermint Barden Dress designed by LB Textiles from Peppermint Magazine. This one is my favorite dress to wear in the summer. Is it my favorite dress? It's definitely up there as one of my favorite dresses to wear in the summer. It is the perfect dress to wear when it is super hot and you just don't want anything touching your body. It is really nice and fitted and shaped over the bust and then it is just huge and voluminous. It moves around, it swishes around. You get a nice breeze coming in and nothing is touching you. I did actually add some waist ties just to give myself a little bit more definition around the waist. You could easily leave, leave those off, especially if you have a drapier fabric, you really don't need them. But if it's a little bit of a more structured fabric, you might wanna just cinch that waist in and that's an easy adaptation to make. But I will say in general, this one, it came together really nicely. I generally do feel like it's a beautiful pattern. It's finished nicely on the inside. I wear this one all summer long. I've made two versions and I really do love the shape and the fit of it. This one for me, I feel like I would be lost without my Barden dresses in the summer. So I've got to put it as a wardrobe staple. This one also has really fantastic pockets, really big, really nice shape. I actually steal this pocket to use for other patterns. So if for no other reason you get this pattern, steal the pockets, they are fantastic. The Billy Wearable Blanket from DIBY Club, Do It Better Yourself Club. I feel like my life is split into two periods. There is the before the Billy Wearable Blanket and after the Billy Wearable Blanket. Honestly, guys, I don't even want to think about the winters before I had this thing. I love this blanket. It is the Udi, so it's a version of the Udi that you can make yourself. I've got one for myself and I made one for my husband because he was jealous seeing me looking really cozy in this thing. My winter is not complete without this, honestly. I wear this all the time. It is absolutely on my body when I wake up in the morning, before I turn the heating on, I put it on whenever I'm feeling chilly. It is better than any kind of blanket, heated blanket, warm dressing gown, multiple sweatshirts. None of it does it like the Billy Wearable Blanket, guys. Love this thing. Cannot put it anywhere other than download this pattern. Highly, highly recommend. I also have three more like tutorials rather than sewing patterns, but I feel like they're a free instructional thing that you can use to make a pattern out of. So I feel like that counts. The first one I'll talk about is the cami skirt from The Hemming. So this is a tutorial instructional. They do have different measurements based on your body measurements and what size you wanna pick. But this is another one where it really doesn't go to a very expansive size range. But I don't think you need to be using their chart. The main thing is just the measurement that you're going to start with is going to be your hip measurement. And then you want to go one and a half times that to get what the top band of this skirt is like. And then the second band is one and a half times the length of that. So you can work that out for yourself and just follow the tutorial. Essentially, it's a gathered skirt. But what this has going for it, because it has two tiers and it has that little exposed what is the exposed edge at the top of that second tier, makes it a little bit special. So I wouldn't have known how to do that without following this tutorial. I wouldn't have felt confident it was all gonna come together really nicely. I do really like the skirts that I made out of this. I did make two skirts out of this, but I did also adjust a little bit where the length of that first skirt section was. So I looked where I wanted that skirt to fit on my body, where I wanted it to sit on my waist. And then I measured down to where I wanted the second tier to start, really just below the fullest part of my hip because I felt like that was gonna create a better shape. So if you're gonna do this one, I would just be a little bit careful about the length of these different tiers. You might have to do some mathematics yourself just based on your own body measurements if you don't fit into their smaller size range. But I think it's a good tutorial if you wanna make this style of skirt. But I would just be careful if you are wanting to make it, you're probably gonna to have to just move it around a little bit to get a fit in the shape that you like. I think I'm just gonna say, don't say I didn't warn you. If you make this one, I hope it works out and I hope you love yours. But yeah, be a little careful. Next up is a shared bodice tutorial that I myself put out there on YouTube last year. What I will say is sharing is no joke. It takes a bit of time. It takes a bit of patience. If you have the time, if you have the patience, I do think that it is worth doing it. You can get some really gorgeous garments. 
I really do love the jumpsuit that I managed to make out of this, but I used the cast wide leg pants for the trouser that I mentioned, and I just feel like I would have liked a little bit more room in the hip. It's comfortable enough, but I would have preferred it to be a little bit more spacious, so I would have wished I'd sized up on those trousers. My tutorial includes full French seams, how to make this whole thing from start to finish, so if you are interested, I will put a link to that one so that you can check it out. I'm being brutal here, guys. Like, I'm not gonna pretend that this is better than it is. Even though I really do love this pattern, I think it's a well worth your sewing time. It's not fully into a staple, even though I wish that this style was my staple, was my lifestyle. It just isn't. So yeah, well worth your sewing time. And finally, a self-drafted shirt, skirt, or dress. Now, I don't actually have a tutorial for this one, but By Hand London did a really good tutorial in their Instagram stories. I'll try to link it. I don't know if you can link Instagram stories, but if not, I will link to their page and you can look along their highlights. They have the whole tutorial for the shirt dress. Now, their version, they added sleeves. I didn't really want sleeves because what I wanted to do is to be able to actually wear this one as both a dress and a skirt. So if I pull it up, it's a nice, cute, dress and I have a strap that I just snap on literally with a snap at the front and the back and then I take the snaps off if I want to be wearing it as a skirt. Again, shirring it's a little more involved. The By Hand London tutorial includes French seams which is what I did on my version as well. This I think is just a really nice way to add a little bit of shape, to add a little bit of comfort into your day-to-day -day wear. I think it looks really great, it's really flattering. I really do love this dress but I feel like it's one that it takes a little bit more to make it and I don't necessarily need a ton of the same style in my wardrobe and you can obviously make the tiers the different widths however you want them to be so it's really just going to go down to personal preference so I'm going to say I would sew it again. I will of course be leaving details down in the description box of how you can access any of these patterns if you want to try them out for yourself. I would really love to hear if you have made any of these patterns, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Obviously, depending on our styles, our body types, the fabrics we use, we're going to have different outcomes, but it's fun to hear if you guys have had similar experiences as well. If you think I have cheated any of these patterns out and they really should have gone higher up or even maybe lower down, let me know as well down in the comments. If you have any particular patterns that you recommend that are free, that you think I should check out, that you think other people should be checking out, make sure you leave those in the comments as well, especially if you know of a good elastic waist trouser, wide leg trouser that is not the cast pants. I would love to get an alternative free one that I can try out that I can recommend to others. Please do give me a like if you enjoyed the video. It was a really fun one to make for me. I hope you enjoyed it and please do subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. I'll be seeing you guys again soon. Bye.